and was kind of like taking stray shots at him for no reason and interrupting him and like, you know, uh, lobbing insults at him. And it was really bizarre. But you actually saw several different candidates do that last night. And it, I think, spoke to Ramaswamy's effectiveness and also how much his style and, to a certain extent, his worldview irritates kind of the old guard of the Republican Party. Okay, so let's unpack that for a minute. When political analysts say someone won a debate, I think what they mean is that person made the most lasting impression. But does that win actually mean anything? Or does that just mean he was the most annoying or, <laughs> or the most different? Like, I, I couldn't tell what the pop that yeah. he was getting actually meant or translated into. <laughs> I, I feel like, I, I think he'll probably get a small bump in the polls from this. I think this is going to be good for him in terms of potentially being on the VP shortlist for Trump, potentially or, or perhaps more likely being a cabinet pick. I think that would be a really easy thing to do, kind of like, you know, the Pete Buttigieg of the Joe Biden administration, um, pick him for something. I, I think that that's what we're thinking about here. But like more broadly, the way that Ramaswamy presented himself, the sort of success he was able to have with people in the audience and, and you know, that he has every time he speaks – I think is going to be a real, like, I think we're going to see more of it. I think we're going to see more candidates try to emulate that sort of, like, young gunner, like, he was sort of being a stand-in for Trump, like a young, bubbly Trump. Um, And I I just think he did it much more effectively than, you know, someone like DeSantis uh, could do. That is what this performance left me wondering about. I have long thought of Trump as a singular character, but watching Ramaswamy, I felt like Trumpism has morphed into a strategy. Like maybe this is a new political type. Here is the young, not white, not Christian, techie version of Trump. And are there infinite other varieties out there? And is that terrifying? (laughs) Well, well, I, I'm curious about this, because what about him reminds you of Trump? Because I, I, I feel like I, I was trying while watching the debate to identify what it was that made him Trumpy. Because I agree, and I think the other candidates on the stage, frankly, saw him as a proxy for Trump. So, mm-hmm. You know, Trump wasn't there. So they were almost kind of venting their frustrations with Trump at Ramaswamy, saying, you know, he's a political neophyte, he's a rookie, uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's putting everyone down. You, you, you could hear kind of shades of the frustration that they probably have with Trump, but don't dare speak out loud uh, when they were talking about Ramaswamy. But he, he is very different in style in some ways, right? I mean, he he talks fast. He does that thing where he has kind of the high school debate model UN patter that he thinks makes him sound smart or and I personally think kind of makes him seem like a salesman, but a lot of people respond to it. Um, but he, he doesn't totally sound like Trump, but the, it, it's almost like he's taken the core elements of Trumpism uh, in, in style. It's the kind of comic insult routine you know, the the bluster. And in worldview, it's the kind of right-wing populism, nationalism, the, uh, you know, all these other candidates were are bought and paid for. He said that a couple times, or he called his, his rivals super PAC puppets. He, he was drawing on some of those populist themes. But I think it's a, an interesting question because I, I've long wondered how Trumpism could be replicated. And I don't think the answer is to do what Ron DeSantis has done, which is actually kind of literally mimic Donald Trump's mannerisms and uh, manner of speech, but rather to kind of channel the kind of uh, the the themes of Trumpism and then make it their own. Is that is that what you saw in Ramaswamy? Well, to me, yeah. I mean, they, stylistically, they're very different. Like to me, Ramaswamy is more. Like he's just brighter, shinier than Trump, faster talking. But but yeah, he 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 seems to have this sort of like nothing to lose attitude that mm-hmm. Trump also had and continues to have. Um, that makes him able to just raise his hand when no one else is, like say whatever he's thinking. He, he appears as Trump did to me to have just arrived at a lot of these. Uh, conclusions about, you know, right-wing populism. Like, you know, in the the past couple of years of his life, he sort of seems to be trying out a lot of ideas and they're working. So that's what he believes now. Um, That's the familiar thing to me. I'm also struck by the extent to which he has channeled the kind of 
almost reckless distrust of all government institutions to the extent that he's flirting with 9-11 trutherism, as our colleague John Hendrickson reported earlier this week. You know, Donald Trump did the same thing when he kind of came on the scene in 2016. He sounded different from other Republicans because his version of kind of conservative populist grievance manifested in ways that were once considered too taboo for a Republican to venture into. He was, you know, besmirching the Bush family and attacking the Iraq war and and flirting with various conspiracy theories around uh, 9-11 and vaccines. And and it seemed so kind of radical. And, And I think now the savvy politicians like Ramaswamy have realized that there really isn't that much political cost to engaging in that kind of conspiracizing that was once seen as outside the Overton window. Yeah, I mean, that's what struck me about Ramaswamy as a template, that it felt like modern technological thinking. You see that there's a disruption. Trump is the disruption. Hmm. You take from that disruption and you perfect upon it. So I am Trump, right. you know, 2.0 right. or 3.0. You sort of morph it and, and, and twist it so that it's sort of slightly better than the original disruption. That's how it felt like he was operating, which made DeSantis feel like a sort of a a, a, a broken coding or something, like whatever it was that DeSantis <laughs> was doing, just to finish the metaphor. Like You, you really landed exactly the plane work. with that metaphor. I was oh, impressed. Good thank job. you. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about DeSantis for a minute. 